talking with Chris Buzzkirk. He's the author of America and the Art of the Possible. Now, Chris, there's some pretty dire statistics going on. You know, in, in the past, I guess, couple of decades in particular, we've seen lack of progress, and in a lot of ways, we've seen things get worse. I mean, the basic economic statistics look okay, but the wealth gap has increased. Uh, we, it's, we see a lot of just lethargy and, and people frustrated with the nation, and we've seen these cultural battles. And how do we get back to the America that once was the art of the possible? I mean, what well, you know, we need to innovate more, um, and that uh, and that's not as easy as it sounds, uh, as as it turns out. I mean, I don't think there's anybody who I would talk to and say, you know, we need to innovate more, and they'd fight me and say, no, Chris, I I think we need to innovate less. The question is, what's stopping us, right? And that's a fundamental question uh, that I try and uh, address in the book. I mean, the first half of the book, as you know, is sort of. Um, I always say it's like my litany of complaints. Um, you know, it's what's gone wrong. Uh, and I didn't want to stop there because I, because really I want the book to be a hopeful book because, you know, at a, at a very basic level, I believe in human agency and, you know, human responsibility. And we can do things. We can actually achieve a lot. But that means, number one, being honest about where we are and what's gone wrong, but not stopping there, right? And that's just the predicate to constructive action. And so, you know, I looked at some of the things that had that had gone wrong. You you talk about the the wealth gap, and I spent quite a bit of time on this on this discussion because, you know, I was sort of conditioned to think like, oh, that's like a left wing talking point that actually doesn't exist, or it's you know they're blowing it out of proportion or whatever. Um, and actually, if you dig into the numbers, this uh, this actually has been going on, yes, and it started in about 1970. The, like the wealth gap between rich and poor in this country has increased. Um, the, it, it was, and I guess maybe the best way to frame this or to, to, for people to, to understand this is that it was the case in this country that if you had minimal education, however that was defined in the past, you know, maybe it was only an eighth grade education, or then it became sort of like a high school diploma or whatever. And you, uh, and you were willing to play by the rules and do your work, you could live a good life. Maybe not extraordinary, but you could live a solid, you know, what we would think of as the middle class uh, life. And you worked hard, you played by the rules and things. And would send your kids to college who could then advance the next generation. So it was a that, generational improvement. No, that, yeah, that's exactly right. And what we've seen now is that the, it, like, incomes and household wealth have accelerated uh, and have grown quite rapidly at the very top. Right. So the top like one tenth of one percent has done extraordinary, extraordinarily well. The top one percent has done quite, quite well, uh, but not as well as the top point one percent. And then the next nine percent has done better than everybody else, except for that one percent above them. When you look down, but you then you look at sort of the bottom half of the scale. Like this isn't just like the people at the bottom and they're doing everything wrong. This is like the bottom half of the country. Fifty percent of our fellow citizens. These people have not done well at all, um, and in and in fact, what's happened is their their incomes and their household wealth has either flatlined. Um, so while other people are getting wealthier, they haven't uh, moved at all, or it's actually declined. And there's there's a problem there because there's a political problem there. By the way, one of the you know the the sort of predicate for this is that we haven't had the sort of technological advances that'll sort of pull everybody along with them, even sort of the maybe the least able or the least educated. They have a way to fit in, um, and this this goes to what we were saying before about uh, about the the thing in 1923 where people spent a bunch of time figuring out how to extract money from people further down the income scale from them. It's like the rental of the washing machine, but that mo just moves wealth up. And that becomes a political problem because when you have extreme wealth gaps and you have extreme income gaps, guess what? You have a lot of people who are unhappy. You have a lot of people, especially in this country, where we're, where we're bred to believe in the American dream and we should believe in it. And then when it feels like a broken promise, you wind up getting Bernie Sanders. You wind up getting AOC. You wind up getting all of this tension in our politics because people feel like they're, they were betrayed. Yeah. And so what I propose in the book is let's start to figure out projects that we can work on as a country that actually will be national projects that will make everybody's lives better. Some more, some less, but everybody's moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm.